Hello and welcome from the Andra Drag Racing Series Final. It is, of course, the Summit Racing Equipment Grand Final here at Adelaide International Raceway. And we have got a big crowd in the house ready to come out this weekend with four Group 1 categories. Top Fuel, Top Alcohol, Top Door Slammer and Pro Stock. Speaking of Pro Stock, let's check out the championship board, all thanks to High Tech Oils. Lee Bektash leads on 165, followed by Joe Polito, Chris Soldatis, Bill Perticaris, Bill Costis, and Jerry Corenti rounding out the six. We are about to head into Q4, the fourth qualifier of the weekend for Pro Stock. Of course, let's take a look now at the qualifying order after three sessions already. We see at the top of the tree, it's Lee Bektash with a 582. Of course, Jody Racco is second with a 591. Chris Soldatis, third with a 595. And Jerry Prenti, the fourth quickest, with a 631. As we move into Q4 here for Pro Stock at the uh, Summit Racing Equipment Grand Final. Joining me in the commentary box, Aaron Hambridge, back for another job behind the microphone. Yeah, thanks, Jay. It's good to be back in Adelaide. This is uh, one of my favourite racetracks. I haven't been here for about two years, but uh, it'd have to be the flattest racetrack in the country, that's for sure. Well, Pro Stock, of course, these guys running through five speed boxes. And, uh, of course, this weekend at, at Adelaide International, Aaron, we're running across a 1,000 foot. Yeah, the braking area is a little bit shorter here than some of the racetracks, so for safety reasons they pull it back to a thousand feet, but that's fine by myself and most of the other racers, and um, yeah, it's still first to the finish line, so it's just a slightly sort of shorter distance, but most of the guys are happy with that. Now out there on the track at the moment, we've got uh, Jerry Parenti in his Pontiac, of course uh, taking on Jody Rayco in the Holden Monaro. So Rayco moving into that uh, right-hand lane, running the X Wayne Daily Diamond T Products and toolboxes uh, Holden Monaro. Of course, this car imported into Australia, geez, that it'd have to be about four or five years ago now. Yeah, this car, when Wayne Daly had a crew chief by Michael Marriott, really smart guy from WA, and it's been very successful. It's run some really quick times. I think they've won a race or two, so yeah, he's got a good set of wheels under him, and hopefully he can take this race out here. Well, so far, we've seen Jerry Parenti run 6.10. Jody Rocco has run uh, 5.91. So, of course, this, uh, in fact, Chevrolet for Jerry Parenti. The final qualifier coming our way here at the grand final. Both got drivers will want to throw everything at it to try and eclipse that 580 that we've seen from Bektash. How do we go? 601 for Rayco, 610 for Parenti. Unfortunately, as we just saw there a moment ago, there's no speeds this weekend, but it is all about getting to the stripe first. Yeah, both guys trying real hard there. You can see in the first couple of hundred feet, both cars a little bit loose. Fair bit of steering going on in the left lane there, but both cars under control, good clean runs. Sounds like you had to pedal the car a little bit there just to make sure you kept it under control. Well, Lee Bektash, of course, this is his last race event in the Andrew Drag Racing Series. And he'll be taking on Chris Soldatis. Soldatis, a long, long history in drag racing, stepped up from super stock, then uh, into the pro ranks quite a number of years ago now. So we've got the GDO of Soldatus taking on Lee Bektash's giant killing Dodge. And of course, uh, Lee Bektash, he reset the track record here at Adelaide International Raceway to a 582 over the thousand foot in, uh, in the last qualifier. Yeah, as you touched on before, Jace Lee, big personality, big name, big sponsor to be going out of the sport. It's a real shame, but uh, it sounds like he's going out with a bang, resetting records, and you know, it'll be a shame to see Lee and his crew guys not at the racetrack, but um, hey, the class will survive. It'll, it'll keep growing, getting bigger and better. Now, something that we've seen with uh, Pro Stock for many, many years is that adjustment, that final adjustment on the wheelie bars. Obviously, Aaron, that, that's all about making sure that they get the transfer of the, the weight right. Yeah, these cars here are probably probably the most technical car as far as suspension is concerned at the drag strip. They go to the nth degree. They, they measure everything to, um, you know, eighths and sixteenths of an inch. They set those wheelie bars at the last minute in case we're in a different spot on the racetrack, and it's a slightly different height. So they make sure everything's perfect before these cars go down the racetrack.
Good run. Soldatus sticks with him though. 597 for Chris Soldatus and a 588 for Lee Bektash. Yeah, not able to improve on his previous run, but nice and consistent. Almost run exactly the same. You can see there, Lee, nice, calm, collected. Got one elbow rest in there on the left hand side. Car stayed nice and straight. And you're right, it's an absolute shame to be seeing uh, Lee step away from the sport. Of course, we see the qualifying results there. 582 for Rebecca Tash, Juddy Rako, 591, Chris Solatis, 595, and Jerry Prony, 610. We are about to go top door slammer racing. Of course, one of the crowd favourites here at Adelaide International Raceway. Five great teams in the house, and of course, uh, the man that is on everybody's lips, it is John Zapier. He is, of course, chasing his 15th round win in a row. All right, let's look at the uh, championship points. John Zapier, 586 points, has wrapped up the championship for 2016, 2017. And of course, uh, he'll be looking just to try and take home the win tonight. Well, we can see the cars rolling out, top door slammers, certainly, as I mentioned before, one of the crowd favourites uh, all over Australia. And of course, they are running over a thousand foot here at air this weekend. Let's take a look now at the qualifying results. The man, John Zapier, sits number one with a 489. Then Paul Canuli, Ben Bray, Robin Taylor and Victor Bray. Becky Lamb caught up with John Zapier down in the pits. John Zapier, for the 10th time in a row, you are the Top Door Slammer champion. That is such a cool achievement. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, no, it's been an awesome ride and uh, be able to do this 10 years full time and uh, race the Fuchs Monaro and uh, no, it's been awesome. Talk us through the 2017 season. What's been a highlight for you? Oh, I suppose uh, you know, running some low 70s in Perth at the Motorplex and uh, running uh, 256 mile an hour, which is like 413 kilometres an hour. So that's uh, our personal best speed as well. And you know, we've won four events straight now, so that's 12 round wins. And uh, we're about to, you know, we've just top qualified here in Adelaide with a 489 for the thousand foot and we've got a solo in the first round so i guess we'll go 13 rounds uh straight win and uh we want to continue on and try and make that 15 by the end of the event door slammer round one coming our way right now between rob mad professor taylor and this man ben bray yeah benny's had an unreal year he's done really well considering that was a brand new car at the start of the season Get that car up to speed. You just got to catch that man just on the screen, John Zappia. Yeah, that man there, uh, the mad professor, of course, uh, had a, a rather nasty racing incident down at Calder Park at the Jamboree around, I think, November last year. Fortunately, he's been able to uh, rebuild in a very short amount of time and get the mad professor uh, back on track. Benny Bray, on the other hand, as you said, uh, you know, effectively, this car is now 12 months old. And man, Ben Bray is really starting to get a handle on this uh, Golf Western Oil Chev Corvette. Yeah, as you spoke about before, Rob unfortunately had a, huh, an incident with the wall. Pretty sure that car's you know, never to be seen again. So he's bought two brand new cars into the country. Uh, he also has a C7 Corvette. Similar look in the Ben's car here, even though Ben's is modeled a little bit older shape. He had both of them in Sydney, I think about a week or two ago, testing the pair of the cars. And you know, they both showed promising results. He's just got to get out there and make them a lap. Gee, Ben Bray, he's bounced back really well. I mean, uh, you know, the kid, as we know him, he's been racing door slammer since he was 17 years of age. And, uh, and of course, you know, he had a, a transporter incident or an accident going back to, I think, about 2012 or 13. Was out of racing for about 12 months and uh, then came back and effectively had an incident in his uh, import car. And just to be out there on the start line shows the determination of this young guy. Yeah, no, Ben's definitely committed. He hurt his back in a big way two times now. So that, the, the fact that he's back here, he's on the start line, he's in a car, hey, that's guts. Have a look at this. The mad professor runs away with round one. 5.24 for the win. Beats Ben Bray. Yeah, Benny gets out, fair bit of tie shake there, and then a thing throws the belt. I'm not sure what caused it to break the blow belt there, but unfortunately, Benny's going home. Well spotted. You can see the belt just flickering behind on the track. 
from Ben Bray. Well spotted, Aaron. Moving on now. We go to Victor Bray and Paul Canooley. This is Paul Canooley on board. Five hundred and twenty-one cubes of Brad Anderson Engineering, the best of the best. Speaking of the best of the best, Victor Bray, six times top door slammer champ. I mean, man, what hasn't been said about Victor? No, listen, there's no more of a household name in drag racing than Victor Bray. Everybody knows him, and and so they should. The guy's the king of the burnout, that's for sure. He's been around forever. Very happy guy, very likable guy. Yeah, it's great to see him out. He races after probably thirty-five years in the sport. Now, Canooley, Paul Canooley in beside him, of course, uh, running that Plymouth Duster. Now, there are two Canooleys, they're both brothers. John Canooley, who we will see in Top Alcohol a little later on. But this is uh, his younger brother, Paul Canooley, based out of Sydney. Yeah, I know Paul quite well. We do a little bit of work on this car and uh, give these guys a hand with some of their engine parts. Unique combination this car, I spoke about it before, Root Supercharger. Generally, they make a little bit less horsepower than the screw-blown cars, but they do get a weight break to compensate for that, so therefore the car can be lighter. But these guys get a lot of help from a, a big-name Pro Mod racer in America, Mike Janis, and they've got all the latest technology on that car straight from the USA out of his Pro Mod car. So they're a force to be reckoned with. They've run 580s, they've gone rounds. They can take on anybody. Well, they are certainly taking on one of the best now in Victor Bray. Of course, uh, that all-new Gulf Western oil livery on board for the uh, 57 Chev of... Yeah, the bloke that used to be a tomato farmer way back when. Paul Canooley looks like he had the advantage off the start line, but Victor will drive it through to the stripe for the win. 5.24 for Victor Bray's win over the 6.60 from Paul Canooley. Yeah, Paul overpowering the racetrack there, really getting up on the tyres. He had a stab at the throttle a couple of times, but shut it off. But I don't know if anybody else noticed that. That in-car footage of him leaving the start line, he actually had to lean around the pillar to see the start line, to see the Christmas tree so he could leave. I've never had to do that in any of the cars I've driven, but I couldn't think of anything more uncomfortable than having to try and lean around with a helmet on just to see where I'm going. Well, our number one qualifier, John Zapier, is uh, he's got a solo through into the semi-finals. And we saw that John Zapier ended up with a 4.89 as his qualifying time. The only car of our five top door slammers here this weekend at the grand final to in fact step into the four second region. Yeah, once again, John just proven why he is the 10 time champ. Yeah, he always comes into most races with, you know, half a tenth, maybe a tenth on the field, but this weekend he's quite a long way in front. Hopefully the rest of the field can step it up and keep up with him and make a good race out of it. Now we know that John Zabia has in fact wrapped up his 10th consecutive championship within uh, Andrew Drag Racing. And uh, of course that is equal to that of John Force in the NH NHRA. John Force has won 10 in a row, and so has this man. Uh, a feat that is only achieved by a very, very select few. Yeah, you're not gonna probably ever see that happen again in Australian drag racing. You know, it's very competitive, but John just always stays that step ahead. Waiting for him to bump it into stage. He's got a free ride into the semis. Oh, very sweet pass, runs down the middle for a 494. So John Zapier retains and hangs on to being the only driver so far to run into the four second region. Yeah, good clean run there by John. Nothing much out of the ordinary. You notice the revs aren't as high as some of the other racers I've seen there when leaving the start line and shifting the gears. So it sounds like they're calming the cars down a little bit to get them down the racetrack. Well, coming into the semi-finals, we will see Zapier take on the Mad Professor and Victor Bray will get a solo into the final. Rob Taylor, you have just won round one of Top Door Slammer. It's a big day for you. It's a big day. Look, uh, you know, the day you can put Ben Bray on the trailer and only because his blower belt come off because he's an unbelievable competitor and they're very good friends of ours. It's a good day for us. I mean, we've only been doing this a short period of time and um, this crew has worked. I mean, we had an accident just before Christmas and this crew has worked tirelessly to get these new cars ready. So it's a fabulous day, yes. Talk us through the crew. What are they going to be doing now to make sure that you get that through that second round as well? So what will happen now is we'll turn the car around, they'll do clutch adjustment, they'll do tappets, they'll check the motor, they'll check the whole car, they'll go through all the process, fuel it, we'll fire it. In there somewhere we'll try and get a cold drink and then we're ready for round two. 
coming up right after this break. We've got more action from the Summit Racing Equipment Grand Finals with Top Fuel and Top Alcohol. Welcome back to Adelaide International Raceway for the Summit Racing Equipment Grand Finals. We have got some top alcohol action about to come your way right now. But before we do, let's take a look at the championship points. John Canerly leads on 185, followed by Craig Glasby, then Lockman, Deary, Marchant, Mags, Talbot and DeCaro all round out the eight. Well, as we can see, they're just prepping to come out for the first elimination here this afternoon. Always a great family affair here at Adelaide International Raceway. Now, let's take a look at our qualifying results again. Over a thousand foot, John Canooley qualifies with a 474 and wraps up the 2016-17 championship on that run. Becky Lamb caught up with John Canooley down in the pits. John Canooley, you are the 2017 Top Alcohol Champion. I mean, that's got a pretty good ring to it. Yeah, it has. It's good. Um, we've been working hard the last few years. We've had ups and downs, but um, it's been good. Talk us through the setup changes of what you might have had to do from Perth only a few weeks ago to coming here this weekend. Sort of, we uh, sort of uh, backed it down for the first round, uh, but we actually went back to the setup that we had in Perth on that second uh, qualifying session, and it would have went really fast, but we had some uh, mechanical issues. But uh, we'll see first round today, and hopefully uh, bring the trophy home this afternoon. Moving now into the first round of eliminations for top alcohol. Moving into the left lane, Wayne Talbot out of Victoria with that nostalgic style Plymouth. And in beside him, Craig Russo out of uh, Victoria as well with the Dodge Charger. Talbot's car with a nostalgic looking body, but I'll tell you right now, the running gear underneath that, there's nothing nostalgic about it. It has pretty much the latest model stuff out there. Screw blower, what they call a fat head, which is a style of cylinder head on the car. Pro Mag 44, it might look old, but yeah, I'll tell you now, don't go like an old car, that's for sure. You've got the old woody paint job on the side as well, which uh, makes it look a million bucks. Now, let's have a look. We see that uh, Talbot, in fact, qualified number three, and Craig Russo qualified number four. We started with six cars in qualifying, and we are now down to, effectively, four cars right here in the uh, first round. Great shots coming on board from our uh, cameras, capturing all the ambience that is here this weekend for the grand final. And I've got to say, Aaron, that crowd is starting to build. Yeah, Jace, that's one of the reasons I love racing here. The crowd's nice and close to the racetrack. They have a great view and the place fills up. There's a heap of energy here. So inside the car, what are these guys doing right about now? I'll tell you what, their left foot will be shaking, that's for sure, on the clutch pedal as they get ready to build the revs up, making sure they hit the right RPM point and leave when that light goes green. Cracker of a run, Talbot runs on through for the win, 5-1-9, beats Russo's 5-26. Yeah, that's the best run Wayne's made all weekend, so it's good to see him step up and improve for his first round, and uh, yeah, he's going through the final. Well, you did say that the car is packing all the good gear underneath, and that just showed uh, that exactly right then. As we look at our Garmin Verb replay, we see that he kept the butterflies well and truly open all the way to the stripe. Now, the man that has now wrapped up his second top alcohol championship, John Canooley, about to come forward in the Nova LED funny car. That camera really gives you the uh, the bird's eye view, like you're a driver of one of these cars. Yeah, no, they're they're a hell of a thing to drive. They're um, they're short, they they're overpowered to be honest, but they're they're a handful. And John does a great job of getting this race car down the racetrack. He's driven these things. I reckon John's been in an alcohol funny car for about seven or eight years now, so he's almost he's pretty much a veteran in the class. Well, of course, his father used to run, I think, modified, and uh, the, both the Canoli boys they are indeed. 
drag racing tragics. They are through and through uh, addicted to this sport, as we said before. John in the funny car here in top alcohol. Paul in top door slammer. Now, John is to face this man right here, Brian Lockman, in this 32 Bandit Malton. Yeah, underneath the bodies, these two two cars are basically the same. Chassis are the same, wheelbase is the same, drive lines are the same. But John's got that body on top of his car that's going to help with a lot of downforce and keep that car stuck to the racetrack. Aaron, interesting to note that Lockman, no burnout for him. No, he must have had some issues. Started the car a little bit late, and obviously he's decided he hasn't got enough time to do a burnout, so he's just going to stage a car. Well, things not going picture perfect and to plan for uh, for neither Lockman or Canooley. Canooley will take the win there. Runs on through with a uh, non-representative uh, 6-4-0. Yeah, John's got away with that one for free for sure. He's left the start line, headed straight to the centre line. Car shook the tyres and he shut it off doing the smart thing. But Brian obviously probably still has wet tyres from rolling through that water. He's just going to stage a car and hope Canooley does something wrong and maybe get himself through to the final. But wasn't to be this day. John Canooley, it's been a pretty good day for you so far. Round one and taking home the win. You've only got one more race to go. Yeah, yeah, it was good. It wasn't what we expected. Um, we sort of underestimated that racetrack just then and um, we just underpowered it. But uh, we'll hop it up for the next round. The guys are working on the car now. What are they actually doing to improve the race for the next? Well, we change clutches every round. We put a new, a fresh pack in it and uh, they'll service it all, make sure it's all good and put a bit more clutch in it and put a bit more power out of it, see what we, how we go. We've already seen the final qualifier from Pro Stock. Now we move into round one, and it's down to the business end of the deal. Yeah, business is definitely where it's at for these cars. People have uh, compared the price of running a Pro Stock car to a top fuel car, you know, surpassing top alcohol and top door slammer. Just a testament to that is through the week I found out that a brand new set of Penske rear shocks, they're electronically controlled for one of these cars, is $20,100 US. So by the time you pay for them, pay GST, convert the dollar freight of here, they're going to owe you thirty to thirty-five thousand dollars for a pair of rear shocks. Definitely not like your local Predator store, that's for sure. Wow, that that is uh, absolute insanity. But again, it's all about the championship chase. Chris Soldatis and Jody Rayco about to go head to head right here in round one. Rayco in this beautiful Holden Monaro, of course, uh, still sporting the Diamond T custom toolbox livery. And then beside him, Chris Soldatis with that beautifully prepped Pontiac GTO. A lot of people also wonder why these guys sit around on the start line for so long. It appears that they're mucking around and just doing stuff unnecessary. Most of these guys want to leave at a low engine temperature and a high oil temperature to make maximum horsepower. So you see a lot of the guys will sit there and all they're doing is toggling switches, turning oil pumps, uh, sorry, turning water pumps on and off and trying to get their oil temp to build up so they can make as much power as possible. So they're not doing anything wrong. They're, a lot of the time it's not tactics, sometimes it is, but most of the time it's about making as much horsepower as they can. And simple things like engine temperature make a huge difference to these engines. Well, as they bring these cars into stage, they will be making sure that they are meticulously placed on the start line as Aaron said, to make sure that they get the ultimate traction. Huge hole shot from Chris Soldatis, an 044. He gets to the stripe first with a 615. Although Jody Rayco was catching him and had the quicker time. Yeah, Rayco had the car to win the race. Unfortunately, left that race on the start line. Soldatus went 044, which is respectable pro stock time reaction times. But, you know, the other lane, I think it was a 140 something. That, that's just not going to cut it in pro stock, unfortunately. Lee Bektash in his final hurrah to take on Jerry Parenti. Yeah, Parenti there with his shoot coming out in the burnout. That's uh, they're either going to have to get that packed really, really quick. Uh, but unfortunately, Parenti's going to—he's he's reversing over his own parachute. I have seen that many times. The drivers don't realise that they come out and a little bit of tire shake pops the pin out. Shoot ends up on the ground and uh, yeah. The, the driver ends up backing over the chutes and there's nothing you can do about it. 
I haven't actually ever seen a crew member get a shoot packed on the start line and see a driver make a race, but they all try every single time. Well, commiserations to uh, Jerry Perini. He did have the little uh, side mirrors on there, but he just couldn't see the fact that his shoot was uh, dragged out behind him. Well, that means that Lee Bektash is going to get the uh, ideal finish to his uh, career here in Andra Drag Racing. He's going to go to the final and he will face Chris Soldatis. But before that happens, he has got a run to make for us. Remembering that he has run uh, a track record here this weekend of a 582. Yeah, well, Lee now knows he's got a freebie here, so he's going to be trying as hard as he can to lower that ET even more and set him up for a good position to go into the final. We touched on before the uh, the professionalism of this team, the livery. I mean, the car looks an absolute million bucks. It's a stunner where it sits down there. And it is a real shame to see Lee uh, departing from the sport. Well, Lee Bektash will win the championship right there on that run here in round one. So congratulations going to Lee. As we see Jerry Paredes shoot shaking loose here on the Garmin Verb replay and then ultimately getting the shutdown from his crew chief. Yeah, that's a real shame, but Lee has that car set up perfect. This thing runs dead straight. He hardly has to steer the car down a racetrack. He's got it dialed in. He was really gonna have to be on top of his game to beat Lee there. Cam's pit report here with Chris Soldat. Yes, Chris, you're into the final. It must feel pretty good to be here right now. But what are you going to be able to do different to make sure you get over that line first? All we can do, we've checked the car and it should be all right. Well, all we can do is just rev it up and send it and see what happens. <laughs> rev it up and send it. That's the method. I like it. So uh, what have we been doing in the interim between the semi-final and the final to the car to make it different? All we've really done is just check the clutch, tune the clutch a bit, just check the engine and just hope for the best and we'll see what happens. I mean, Lee's, Lee's pretty tough to beat, but uh, all we can do is try it. Victor Bray, King of the Burnouts, coming through right now. And of course, he has got that solo run, which will take him straight through to the finals. So we'll see uh, just what sort of time Victor can put down, uh, because he's going to have to have all guns blazing coming into the finals. He is, but I'll tell you what, look, look at this guy. He is so calm and relaxed in the car. He's got one hand resting over there, does the burnout. It's like it's no big deal to Victor at all. He's probably made more runs in a door slam, and especially a 57 Chevy than anybody else in this sport, that's for sure. But hey, experience, you're not gonna beat it. And Victor's calm, you gotta be calm in these cars. You can't be hyped up. You see some drivers get themselves a bit hyped up and they're banging their head around in the roll cage before it starts. But as soon as those cars start, everybody calms down, that engine fires up, all your nerves go away, you're ready to race. Yeah, something that uh, a lot of people might not uh, be aware of is, is Victor's been working very hard on his uh, on his physical being over the past 12 months. And we can see right there with that in-car shot that he is a former shadow of himself. And uh, I think, of course, as a race car driver under these kinds of uh, pressures, that's got to be great for him. Yeah, definitely. When it's your full-time job, you've got sponsors to impress. That's going above and beyond right there what Victor's achieved in the last 12 months. Victor's left, uh, accepted the green and driving on through rather slow. Remembering that he qualified with a 6.30, then ran 5.24. And if he's going to have any kind of problem, that's the uh, race to have it in. Yeah, definitely. He had that freebie there so he could try whatever, but he's had a similar fate that Ben last round, breaking a blower belt. Could be an issue that team's starting to have. Good, strong burnout from John Zapia. And his competitor is going to be Rob Taylor with the Mad Professor Camaro rolling in beside him. So again, we know that uh, John Zapier has not only wrapped up the 10th uh, consecutive championship, uh, if there's one man that's, uh, that's certainly wanting to go all the way to the final, because he is on a massive win streak at the moment. I think uh, his, his four events that he's won 
and uh, he's he's around 13, I think, at this stage yep. for race wins. So John will want to keep that sort of momentum going. He will definitely, but it only takes the guy behind you who's a little bit more hungrier, a little bit more aggressive, to take it away from you. Oh, it's happened to me before. You get out there, start winning quite a few races. Not that you get complacent, but you just get comfortable, and there's always someone behind you trying just as hard that wants to get out there and kick your butt. Let's have a look back to round one. It was an 093 reaction from Rob Taylor and a 0.439 reaction from John Zapier. Zapier is going to have to try and uh, get a lot sharper on the tree. Yeah, Zap will definitely sharpen that up. He had a solo in the first round, so he wouldn't have been trying real hard. He might have been trying something new, but yeah, these two guys are going to battle it out. It'll be a good race. Well, as far as the state of origin, WA taking on Victoria this weekend. Of course, the Victorian, Taylor and Zap from the west. Oh, and Zap steps up to the plate, no doubt about it. An 07-8 reaction, and he runs on through 489 for the win over the 5-1-1 of Rob Taylor. Yeah, this thing's as consistent as a modified car. It just goes 480, 480, 480. John's doing a great drive, drive job in the car, obviously. He's repeating the same thing every lap, and the car's obviously set up pretty much the same most laps. Don't think he's changing a whole lot. He knows he's a long way ahead of everybody else, so if he's comfortable, he'll leave the car where it is. We've also got to give uh, top props to Rob Taylor and his team there, running low fives, going to the semis in just his second event back. Let's have a look at the race ladder now. We will see Victor Bray, six times Australian champion, taking on the newly crowned 10 times champion of John Zapier. Procam Pit Report, I'm here with Victor Bray. Victor, you're into the final for Top Door Slammer. Talk me through the final run. No, it's uh, it's going to be pretty tough. But, but obviously, John Zappi is the, you know, the toughest guy in door slam this, this, the country's ever sort of seen, I suppose. So, And he's very, very consistent. So, um, But saying that, you know, anyone's beatable any one day. The track's actually cooling and the weather's getting very, very cool. So the engines are going to be extremely powerful. It'll be a matter of control on that and uh, adjusting to the track surface. So as the track cools, the traction's a little bit less, especially down through the top end of the track. So, um, you know, I'll get a good chat with Ben and the crew. Uh, we've made some changes that we think might work. I don't know if we can outrun John blatantly if he does a good pass, but we want to be there in case something goes, you know, a haywire in his lane or something, because it's the same for him. It's uh, He's got to dial into the track like we do. But, yeah, the weather's coming good. The engines are going to make tonnes and tonnes of power and uh, good crowd in here in Adelaide this tonight. So it's going to be good. Got a lot of fans here too, which is fantastic. Well, we've got some top fuel exhibition passes about to come our way here at the Summit Racing Equipment Grand Final. Interesting fact this weekend, seeing those guys have brought two of their older cars down. Not 100% sure why they did that. When I say old, they're definitely not old by any means, just older than the two current cars they're running now. But these two are the two fastest cars in Australia. The car on the left has gone 450 with Larry Dixon in it, and the car on the right has gone 451 with Scott Calitter on it in, in it in Sydney, oh, the six, seven, maybe even eight years ago now. Both good cars, very proven, good combinations. It's been an interesting race to see who gets there first. Of course, behind the wheels, we've got noobs. And he'll be taking on this man, Damien Harris. So uh, both cars and both drivers coming out of the Rapposada Autosport International team. Check out the backdrop there. Now you're a top fuel driver, uh, Aaron. Sitting in one of these cars, looking at a packed house like that, that's yep. just got to be the bee's knees. Yeah, it does. It does pump you up, but then you snap out of it because you can hear the engine going in the background. You've got to realise you're concentrating on what you're doing. But uh, yeah, it is a good feeling, especially when you're towing the car around, the car's not running yet, and you look up and you see how many people are. It's, uh, it's a really big ego boost and it really pumps you up and gets you ready for a run. Damien left a bit early there, Redley, but he's car had a hole out at the step and uh, he got down there and got to about half track and started to smoke the tyres. He probably didn't have enough power to drive through the clutch, but still a good respectable run. Check out that shot from the wall and check out how loose we saw Damien Harris get right there. 
Yeah, it surprisingly doesn't feel that bad in a dragster. It always looks a lot worse than what it is, but they're, uh, they're quite calm. I find them reasonably easy to control to some extent, but yeah, outside the car looking in, the car always looks a lot worse than what it really is. Well, Wayne Newby runs on through 4-2-0 to the 4-32 from Damien Harris. Well, all of our Group 1 eliminations are run and done, and coming up after the break, it's finals time. Welcome back to the Summit Racing Equipment Grand Final here at the Adelaide International Raceway. We have got finals, finals and finals coming your way. And of course, first up, it's going to be Pro Stock with what will be Lee Bektash's final run in Andra Drag Racing. And it is a very sad occasion. Yeah, it is, but in saying that, do you know how many times I've seen guys retire and come back? So yeah. hopefully in a few years we'll see Lee back. But for the moment, this is it. This is going to be the last pass of this, uh, Lee and possibly this car, mate. So I'm not sure of the future plans for this car, but we'll see where it ends up. Well, moving in beside Lee will be Chris Soldata. So uh, the pair of Victorians about to do battle here in SA. The Dodge Avenger, it'll take on the Pontiac GTO. And uh, of course, we've got uh, an absolute cracker. When we look at their qualifying, we saw that uh, it was indeed Lee Bektash, uh, number one qualifier. And I think Chris Soldata's qualifying back in number three. Yeah, Lee's running on real this weekend. And so he should. One thing I've noticed about Adelaide, every time I've raced here, the air conditions are better than anywhere I've ever raced in the country. When we come here with the top fuel cars, we actually have to back the engine tune-ups right down to a point where we don't go that far at any other racetrack, just because the air conditions are so good. The barometric pressure's right up, the density altitude's way down, so it's perfect conditions for these engines to make big horsepower. These days I've heard claims anywhere from about 1170 to 1220 horsepower, 400 cubic inches, naturally aspirated through two carburetors, they're unreal power numbers and this is a place they're going to make the most. Well, so good to see that half of Adelaide's population have come out to the track tonight because that is an absolute killer crowd in the house to witness this uh, special occasion. The grand final, the finale of all finales for 2016 and 2017's Drag Racing Championship. And it has all come down to this. Uh, I spoke before about these cars taking quite a while on the start line, but this here is not an example of that. This is tactics. This is both guys burning each other down. Both engines are start, going to start getting hot. They're going to make less and less horsepower. It's usually a competition to see who goes in first to try and put the other racer off. Soldata's had the whole shot. The shoots come out early and it is Bektash takes the win. 5.83. What a fairy tale finish for Lee Bektash and Team Mopar. Yeah, hey, those tactics played off there for Soldatus. He did beat Lee off the start line. He had a good half a tenth on him, but unfortunately Lee just had the better race car, which he's had all day. I think, you know, we couldn't have put on a better show. My team, we did a fantastic job. We did six passes all in the 80s. Um, and, uh, you know, we were running the spare motor and, yeah, just really overwhelming to go out here, win the last race of, of my pro stock career at Adelaide. I know it's only been a small field, but it wins a win in the championship, top qualifier. But the highlight for me is just running those 80s. You know, that's, that's probably six of the best passes that this team's ever put together. And, uh, you know, it's a, I'm just glad we rewarded the crowd. Congratulations to Lee Bektash winning the round and the championship. And of course, in his farewell, Andrew Tua, we certainly wish him the best. Chris Soldatis and Joe Polito round out the top three here in the 2016-2017 Pro Stock Championship. Top door slammer final coming at us with John Zapier and Victor Bray. And uh, Aaron, I know we've said it a you know, hundred times, but the facts are the facts. These guys have raced each other probably more than any other top door slammer combination in drivers. 
anywhere in the world. Yeah, as, as far back as the Wild Bunch days and in you know, the early days of Dorsey, it was these two. There was nobody else. I wouldn't say there might as well have been no one else, but these two were the main guys in the category. They faced off more times than I can remember. It's going to be another interesting battle once again. We did uh, touch base on their championship wins. This man, John Zappia, 10 consecutive championships. The man beside him, Victor Bray, has six championships to his name. Yeah, now both guys with a hand, well, more than a handful, a basket full of wins to each of them. This race could be anybody's, you know. John's John's been in form for quite a few years now. But like I said before, Victor is starting to catch back up. He's really starting to get back on top of his game. I got to tell you, I just got chills. The crowd standing on their feet. How awesome was that? So, John Zapier, he'll want to wrap it up and keep that consecutive win that we spoke about before, that win streak. He'll want to keep ticking along and try and do everything to beat Victor Bray here in the final. Yeah, but Victor's doing everything he can too. He's got Ben out in front, making sure the car's dead straight, exactly in the marks where he wants to be. I'll tell you what, I don't think anyone wants to win a race as much as Ben and Victor want to win this right now. Well, as I said earlier, check out the crowd. They're on their feet for this final here in Top Door Slammer. Advantage to Bray off the start line, but it's going to be Zapier all the way. 486 beats the 513 from Team Bray and Gulf Western Oil. So the Fuchs Lubricants uh, HQ Monaro gets the job done well and truly. Yeah, been a bit of controversy between these two teams this year, so you know, awesome battle to end the year. Great run by John. Victor cut him on the, on the start line, beat him on the tree, which is good to see. And by the first round in Darwin, he's won the whole championship. He's won five out of six. I think it's 15 round wins. It doesn't get any better than that. Um, what can I say? Uh, we've, we've been undefeated in Andro Championship Racing since Alice Springs in July last year. And uh, it's just been a dream run. 10 championships, you know, the sponsors that have been behind me, my crew, done a wonderful job. They just work their butts off and do whatever's required. Uh, we had the new CP Conrods in the car this weekend and they performed faultlessly. Um, oh, there's so many people to thank, but you know, it's just been an awesome build up to this and uh, what a way to finish the season. So 10 consecutive titles for John Zapier. And of course, he is on a 15 win streak. Mark Baleri, Ben Bray, Grant O'Rourke, Sam Fennick, Victor Bray, and Paul Canooley, along with Scotty McLean there in number eight, round out the championship for 2016 2017. We have got top alcohol coming our way for the final here at the Summit Racing Equipment Grand Final. It'll be this man, John Canooley, to take on Wayne Talbot. Yeah, John might be the favourite in this race. He's run a lot faster, he's got a later model body car, but hey, Wayne's going to be out there trying as hard as he can. I've been working with him a little bit outside of this, to help him with a few things, trying to step his combination up, and uh, yeah, he's got a lot of help from a lot of good people, and hey, hopefully he can turn it on and really throw it at John. Well, once again, this massive crowd here at Adelaide International Raceway are on their feet as we see some, some sights that we normally wouldn't see. Wayne Talbot, the shot from inside, and of course, he's relying purely upon that, that backup person in front of him. Yeah, it's a very different thing backing up a funny car for the first time, or any any drag racing car, you know, open car, altered drag style funny car. You got no mirrors. You're going backward based on exactly that, the person in front of you with their arm in the air. And it's a little bit of a hard thing to get used to. And for quite a while, I used to have to back up from just like where I finished in the burnout all the way back. And after about a year, I got used to it. And I could back up two thirds of the way on my own and someone would come in front and just guide me back to the last 30 or 40 feet. But yeah, a lot of guys still need someone to back them up the whole way. And it, it is a hard thing to get used to doing. Well, we saw uh, a moment ago, John's wife, Kirsten, with the backup duties. And this man on screen looking to be the spoiler of all things celebratory for uh, Team Canooley, Wayne Talbot. Checking out uh, the crowd by the look of that. By the look of the eyes. So, John Canooley brings on the pre-stage. Waiting ever, ever so patiently with that pre-stage on until he sees Talbot bring him on. Well, I've got to say, that looked purely like Wayne Talbot left before the actual Christmas tree was activated. Yeah, he's going into stage there and he's either 
He's either had an electrical problem with the tr with the trans brake in his car, or as I have had in the past, a bit of a brain fade. You know, in the final, you're a bit amped up. You're trying to cut as good of a light as you can, and he's just made a mistake. One of the two. Well, effectively, that has given John Canoli the win for the event, the grand final, and of course, he's wrapped up the championship as well. And John Canoli takes home his second championship in top alcohol, followed by Lockman, Talbot, Glasby, Mags, Russo, Ambezi, and Aaron Deary rounding out the top eight. Moving into Top Fuel Exhibition, it is the second pass of the night, and we've got the uh, Rapisada Autosport International team in the house, putting down pass after pass. Of course, uh, we've got Wayne Newby and we have got Damian Harris. You've raced against both these guys a few times now. Yeah, I've, I've made quite a few passes against both these guys when we were on Top Alcohol and now in Top Fuel. Forget the drivers for a minute. I've got to make note of the, the, the boys here, Santo and Santino Rapisada, Santo's two sons. At the ripe old age of 21, they are probably the most experienced and seasoned crew chiefs this country has right now. They've been to America, they've raced a whole bunch of times, they've been successful, they've ran 370s with their race car, they've had world-renowned drivers in their cars, they prepare and run, I've seen them run up to four cars at a race meeting, you've got to take your hats off to these guys, they're putting a huge effort in along with the rest of the crew, the two guys in the cars, they're just a spacer between the steering wheel and the engine. <laughs> Well, it is all in memory of Louis Rapposada, of course, uh, Santo Rapposada's eldest son, who unfortunately left us back in the mid-1980s. And all of his racing is always dedicated to the memory of Louis. So, with that said, can we see these boys run some very staunch low four twos? Candles are lit all the way here at Adelaide International Raceway. Let's have a look. It'll be newbie 423 beats his teammate Damien Harris with a 429. Yeah, killer run. Both cars, candles lit, hooked up. They've run flat out. What a way to end the season. Unreal run for both cars, neck and neck. Wayne got there first. Good to see. Well, as you mentioned, the candles were lit from start to finish for the two uplift crane cars. And what a shot this is. Nitro burning top field dragsters. There's nothing like them on the planet. That was awesome to come down here with both the Rapsarders cars and put on a great show for the crowd and um, hope they all enjoyed it. I certainly did. What's been one of the highlights you've had here this weekend? Oh, I think just um, obviously racing Wayne and three good clean laps, you know, flames out every lap. So the crowd got an absolute uh, great show so that's that for me is what it was about that wraps up the summer racing equipment group one grand final and brings to a close the 2016-17 andrew drag racing season on our next show we'll wrap up all the action from the summit racing equipment sportsman series on behalf of myself jason bean my thanks to aaron hambridge for all of his technical insights throughout the season we look forward to seeing you next time